This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Know How is brought to you by WordPress. Your customers want to find you, so build a WordPress.com website and help them connect with your business. Get 15% off any new plan purchase at WordPress.com slash know how. And by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your home. Go to ring.com slash know how and get up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit. Today on Know How, we're finishing up Project LED Clock. Welcome to Know How. It's a Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Brian Burnett. And for the next however many minutes it takes, we're going to be drilling into your brain, putting knowledge with the special beam cannon thing. Is that what we did? That was Piccolo. It was a beam was a cannon? Special, special beam <laughs> cannon. And we're just firing that knowledge straight into the The camera. actual name is like the Mukurkur. That sounds exactly how it's pronounced. Yeah. I would have preferred a spirit bomb of knowledge, but that would have taken five minutes. So. That, you know, I think that was the thing that saved that series when they were animating it. Spirit bomb? They they remember the the Frieza, the first Frieza uh, arc. Saga, yeah. Right. It was three episodes of him just gathering enough energy for the spirit bomb. <laughs> so, okay, Padre, start the project. I'm gathering en knowledge energy in about, check back in in like 10 minutes. Precisely. <laughs> Uh, now, okay, this is totally... Let's go off the rails at the start of the show, because that's always well. a good idea. Let's, Might as now, well. Uh, you need to check out Dragon Ball Abridged by <laughs> Team Four Star. <laughs> that's, so, that's what this episode is about, <laughs> is educating yourself on abridged Dragon Ball Z. It, it is awesome. And, and specifically, look at the Frieza uh, arc, because there's that one part where he's gathering the energy. Yes. And as he's doing it, they've dubbed it over so that as he's, he's gathering it, he's doing the uh, the... Uh, da 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 oh, Charging da, da, my attack. Da, da, da. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Da, 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 da. Yep, yep. yep. All right. But, well, no, we're not here to talk about that, folks. What we're here to do is to finish up Project LED Clock. You've seen four right. episodes where we've gone through the 3D design. Yep. We've gone through the electrical design. We've shown you the creation of the LED ring. We've shown you the programming. Mm -hmm. And we've shown you the creation of the base. What? Today, we want to tie everything together to mm -hmm. show you how this is actually going to become your LED clock. It's looking pretty good over there. You got your buttons incorporated. Yeah. Looks like you got some JST con um, Absolutely. connectors so there. Let's take a look at this. Before we we, for, uh, we actually dive into the soldering, Let's uh, if you could go to the close-up. That's this. There we go. There go. Uh, this is uh, actually uh, oh. the other one. The, that one. Whoa. You We've got to go a to lot of close-ups. There you go. So this is the nice. base. What we've done inside of here is we've got our Arduino Nano. We've got the real time clock. We've got the two UBEX that supply power. And then we've got the logic. So these are the buttons that actually allow me to choose different parameters inside of my Arduino clock programming. Of course, I've got the 10K resistors that are soldered to each of these in order to uh, allow me to differentiate between the high and low states. Um, I've also got these channels. And what these channels allow me to do is to do cable management. So all the cables coming from uh, from the LED ring itself can be stored in here rather than making a big mess in the center column. My columns, of course, are hollow, which allows me to run my cables up through the top. Uh, and the last bit, this was towards the very end of the last episode, are these. These are diodes. Uh, I need one for the positive side and one for the negative side. Mm -hmm. What this allows me to do is it allows me to supply power to my, uh, my uh, um, uh, Arduino and Nano uh, so my Arduino Nano and the real-time clock from the UBEX without the Nano trying to power the LEDs. Right, because that would be silly. That, will, that would blow that it would up. Blow it, it, would, up. it would actually kill <clears throat> it. it would, you would Which, draw way too much current through a Nano, and yeah. Yeah, it would die. Uh, what this, so the, uh, the diodes, remember, they allow current to flow in one direction and not another. So this mm -hmm. is allowing power to flow from one of the UBEX to the Nano, but not back from the Nano into the main power system. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So what we need to do now is because we assembled the base in the last episode, we now need to put together the LED ring. You may remember the last time we had them on, Brian, yeah. uh, we had 
this. So this. Um, yeah. Yeah, we had made some progress. We, we, we had soldered the two pieces, the two joint pieces there, because that's not a full ring. It's just two halves that you've put into that um, that holster there, right? Right. So this this is going to be the seconds. This is uh, delineating our seconds, and then down here we've got the different arrays that are going to show off the minutes and the hours. Uh, now remember. We're starting from the bottom. So the seconds are the first part of our WS2812 ring. Right. Then we go from that to this. This array is going to be minutes. Mm -hmm. This is minutes times 10. Yep. This is hours. And this is hours times 10. So I need to solder my, my components together so that it will go from seconds mm -hmm. to this, to this, to this, to this. Because if we think back to some of the other projects that we've done with LEDs, the way the Arduino passes information down is from uh -huh. the first LED down to the next and the next and the next. So you can't just skip. And if yep. you solder these out of order, your programming that you've done for this project would be way off. Right. You could fix it by like modifying where the bytes end up. Give yourself a headache. Why, why do that? Just do it right the first time. Mm, don't do that. So let's take a look. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put everything into this. Now, this frame... If, if you go to one of those, there you go. This frame is is all white, and that's because I forgot the all black one because uh, I'm, I'm stupid. But yeah. at least this gives us an idea of what it's supposed to look like. So these modules are going to go inside of this frame like so, and then I'm going to have a cover that's going to go over the top, and ideally all of this, all of this wiring is going to be hidden inside of the wiring channels that I designed into the uh, into the clock itself. Right, right. That's what we want. We want that nice, neat look. You should see no wires once we're done. <laughs> Otherwise, we've done a bad job. If you see the wires, then typically it means it's a prototype, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, or in our case, it's because we got lazy <laughs> and we didn't finish it. Yeah, that's true too. But that's, uh, that's you, I mean, as far as wire management, you've done a good job with this uh, in some of on the base here. But also uh, the goggles. You did a good job on that. And yeah. Kind of reminiscent of that project if you, if anyone out there's tried that. Although with the goggles, someone actually showed me a version of that. They sent me a picture of, of their build. And they deliberately put all the wiring on the outside. And they kind of made it scraggly. And I'm like, oh, that's actually kind of a cool look. A if you do it deliberately, yes. it doesn't look sloppy. It just looks like, oh, okay, I get it. He's going for that whole, like, blown up industrial right. look. So the challenge is to not do it deliberately, deliberately and then later say that it was right yeah. or or uh do a sloppy job and then go huh that looks bad and then make it look really bad so you can say no i wanted it to just throw like some that. steampunk uh gears and things stickers. on it some stickers, stickers. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah <some> hello <laughs> kitty stickers on there all right. all right so let's let's go ahead and put this thing together uh what we're going to need to do first is we're going to need to know the in and the out of our led ring now remember it's very easy to confuse these two if you go to my uh my my shot there burke uh I've got an in and an outside, and the way that I know is by opening up one of my uh, my unsoldered rings, uh, because it's it's very easy to confuse these, and you will mess yourself yeah. up if you do. So if you look at this, this is my outside, this is in. So the data is going to go in here, it's going to go around the ring, it's going to come out here. So this has to come in. This side is going to come in from the base. This side is going to go out to the uh, the minutes and the hours uh, lights. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so, and actually, wow, this, uh, in uh, transporting this, I actually knocked a cable right off of its uh, oh, solder no. pad. Oh, no, so we're gonna so have to solder that back. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to fix that really quick. So this while I- teaching mode. While I do that, Brian, oh. you should uh, entertain the audience with uh, your tales of, of regalia. Good job, Brian. Um, Very well done. Very well done. Well, where do I start, Padre? <laughs> That's the hardest part. I was a lonely kid. <laughs> the year was 1985. I was born here in Petaluma. <laughs> uh, remember, one of the things that we're actually doing here is we are providing power from both sides. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're using two UBEX uh, so that even if this hits its maximum uh, energy surge, it's not going to overload it. Okay. Uh, each, each of these can provide 3 amps, or about 15 watts. The total project is probably going to consume between 15 and 25 watts. We just needed to make sure that we weren't at any time going to overload uh, the power system that we have in there. I, right. could, I could have just reduced the number of UBEX I used by using a larger UBEX, but mm -hmm. it's what I had in my inventory, so that's what we used. But, but keep that in mind. If you're going to build this from scratch, you can go ahead and use a, uh, a much higher rated UBEX. And I, I need to get yeah, close to this. Got to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, this is a good learning moment that not all projects arrive to the studio perfectly uh, <laughs> perfectly working. Sometimes you have to do repairs on the fly. Sometimes things have to pay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into my frame like so. Uh, and I know which ones are minutes and which ones are hours because the small one, this is the, uh, the hours, hours times two. Yeah. So I need my wires to go down like this. And on this side, this is the side that's going to connect to my base. This is the side that's going to connect to my minutes. And I, I deliberately left my leads really, really long because right. we can cut them. It's difficult to add if we cut too short. Much better to have too long than too short. Yeah. Precisely. Uh, but let's do this side first because this is the side that's going to interface with uh, with the, uh, the base. Mm -hmm. I don't want this too long because if this is too long, now this is a lot of slack that I have to hide. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run it inside this channel. I'm going to run it out this port, which is where these wires are going to end up going. Like so. Ta-da. Ta-da. And then I'm going to measure out a little bit of... Uh oh, and I just tore off that wire again. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I'm, I'm having a really good time with that. Uh, I'm going to measure this out. And what I want is I want enough slack so that it keeps a serviceable loop inside the clock. And the reason why I want a serviceable loop is at some point I might have to, to, to remove this. I might have to take this apart and service it. Right. I need enough slack so that I'm not ripping out my connections every time I pop it out. Yeah. So I'm probably going to want about that much. So that, that's about the slack that I'm going to leave. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and if we've learned anything, uh, chances are you will have to repair this at some point. Well, I'm just going to have to repair it right now. <laughs> seriously, I, the, those uh, those connections, normally I would make it outside of the frame. Yeah. Uh, it's harder doing it when it's in the frame, but yeah, let's do it again. Let's. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to do two things. First, we need to be able to attach uh, this JST connector because this we have one on both sides to provide two redundant uh, a redundant power path. And then we're going to add this. This is a little two millimeter bullet connector. You may remember these from our quadcopter projects. If you go to the close-up camera. Uh, and yeah, this just allows me to have a quick disconnect. I could skip this. I could just solder this wire directly to the wire coming out of the base. But again, we want to make this a little easier to, to fix in case something breaks, right? Right. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and strip our standard standard deal. Strip and uh -huh. tin and then solder. Now, normally I would have my helping hands here, but... Um, that's what you have me for, Padre. That's what I have my helping hippo. Do you want me to hold those wires for you <laughs> while you touch them with a hot soldering iron? Uh, <laughs> actually, there's, Herc wants there's me to. very few things I would enjoy more than that, Brian. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I, I'm thinking that me burning my co-host would probably be a bad thing. It's okay. I'll have recovered by the time you get back from your trip. Wow. Trip? Is that what we're calling it now? <laughs> your tartar ship? My tar... <laughs> It's called tertian ship, folks. Not tartar ship. What was the other thing that you were calling uh, it? Teeter totters. The teeter totter. Yeah. yeah, going on your teeter totter trip. Uh, wow. I'm sure uh, there's a couple it's others. Incredibly too. disrespect. <laughs> but that's okay. It probably is. I'm just not aware <laughs> enough to know. Okay, so I'm also using some shrink wrap because, of course, I'm going to want to insulate this. And, Brian, when do we put on the shrink wrap? Uh, <laughs> after you've soldered after everything. After we've soldered yeah. everything, right? No, folks, it's before you soldered. <laughs> Um, and if you've ever soldered before, you've had that that moment where you do the perfect solder and then you go <sighs> deep sigh. You know, yeah. it's just an, an opportunity in disguise to keep practicing, right? I had someone who told me, oh, well, you know, if, whenever I do that, I just use electrical tape. I'm like, oh, okay, that's good for like a month. Ooh, we just got a, a groan and, yeah. then, and then a yell from Burke. Yeah, because Burke's experienced other people using electrical tape. And what does it do? It, first, it falls off, so it doesn't really... Yeah, you know, insulate anything. Right. Secondly, what's going to happen is you're going to leave that gunk Ugh. on everything. Bad idea. And we love the gunk. The <laughs> Not gunk. on my components. <laughs> Not in this house, mister. Mm -mm. Okay, so of course we're doing our standard. Uh, we're wrapping it around uh, so we can make it nice. And actually, I'm going to do this the super stupid way. Uh, and Burke will laugh at me and Smitty will laugh at me, but I'm, I'm, I'm tired Shh. and I need to get yeah. this done. Right. So they don't, don't understand don't, the pressure. Don't of, do too much of a close up here, Burke, because if people see what I'm doing, they're gonna go, "Oh my gosh, Padre, what is your soldering's you? bad, and you should feel bad." I should feel bad. I really should feel bad. Uh, also, I'm soldering a silicone uh, wire to a plasticated wire, oh. and uh, that doesn't work well. Hmm. Uh, also, I don't have my helping hands. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so thanks to Burke, we've got these wonderful set of helping hands. Burke, if you go ahead and, and show these off. <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely brilliantly constructed. Uh, they're like the Mad Max version <laughs> of helping hands. This this is what Furiosa would use if she was soldering. Just, just FYI. Mm, so um, sad. But hey, you know what? They work, and uh, all of our helping hands have disappeared. If it works, then it ain't Burke's. Which, I by mean, the way, works. did you, you know, lead, <laughs> lead solder, it, it if smells If it works, the then best. it works. If I sits, I fits. Something like that. Or if I fits, I sits. If it rhymes, it has to be true. Exactly. All right, so this is, uh, this is my power connector on this side. And, of course, what I need to do now is I need to insulate it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and pull up the uh, pieces of heat shrink tubing that I wrapped this with a little bit earlier. First, let's go ahead and grind this down. What is that, Burke? I think somebody was clapping Was he for golf us. clapping? Uh, did I did Burke not see the applause sign come up. Oh, he's golf clapping. He did. Us. Burke. Wow. He's got. He's wielding too much power back you there. Know, I think he's really enjoying the power he has right now, <laughs> but that's cool. He's, he's a good guy. All right, so let me go ahead and pull this out. We're going to go ahead and heat shrink with our little heat gun. As soon as this hits temperature, there we go. It doesn't look that little. There we go. Look at that. All nice and shrunk, so we're not going to get a short circuit because we don't want any of those. Why didn't you just use electrical tape, Padre? <sighs> Oh, wait, we talked about that. You know, you say that as a joke, but some people are going to hear you and they're going to think you're serious and they're going to use electrical tape and then they're going to burn down their house. <laughs> it was Cranky Hippo's fault. <laughs> and they're going to blame you. They're going to say, Brian told us that we could use electrical tape. It was just the same as heat shrink. <laughs> true. It's all true. Okay. So for this one, this is going to be a bit more challenging because I really can't use the wood clip because it's going to get really hot and the wood clip will set on fire and I, I would prefer not to do that. Are they helping hands or and then you can use them for your laundry too when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, remember the way that we, uh, we do these little bullet connectors is we're going to heat it up to the point where we can melt the solder inside that cup. There's this, there's a tiny little cup here that we're going to end up putting the wire in. Be really careful with this stuff because it is um, it is super, super fragile. We're using 30-gauge wire, mm -hmm. and it does tend to snap. We've already seen it twice right. uh, since the show has started. Uh, I also need to put in a little bit of heat shrink tubing. I'm going to color match it so I've got some white tubing. How about oh, that? Yeah. Are oh. you clever? It's clever, Brian. But uh, before we put that on, let's make sure that it actually fits over the... That doesn't do that. Okay, so that's why we check. <laughs> hey, hey, I checked, okay? Measure twice, heat shrink once. Yeah, measure measures three times, and then heat shrink it twice. Exactly. All right, there we go. All right, that's enough. So let's go ahead and heat this up. We're going to put the solder in here. And after we're done with this connection, what it's going to allow us to do is we can actually test it. So we're going to be able to, uh, to hook this up to the base. We're going to be able to power it up. And if data is traveling properly, and if power is traveling properly, our LED ring should light up. All right, fingers crossed. There we go. We don't quite want to fill the cup. Oh, smoking. Smoking. And like so. Okay, and once it's in there, just let it cool. It's a Normally I'd be process. blowing on it, but I can't because I'm too far away. I'll blow on it for you. Go ahead. Get, get, get in there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> into my mic doesn't work? I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a little loopy today. You were very, very loopy. Right. So this one, I didn't actually have to put the uh, heat shrink on first because this is going to slip over like that. Okay. Ta-da. Ta-freaking-da. And then uh, let's go Back into the helping and... hands. This is a work of art. I know, right? And let it heat up. And this is important because, remember, we're going to be putting these connectors inside of a very constricted area, mm -hmm. and they will have a tendency to want to bump into each other. And you really don't want to send 5-volt power over the data line. No. It does weird things to your array. <laughs> okay. And I know this from, from experience. From experience. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and take this. Uh, we're going to plug it into the, the left side of our – I'll go ahead and go to the wide view. The left side of our project – uh, because that's where the data line is. So the first thing is our JST connector. I'm going to plug it in like so. And the next thing is our 2 millimeter bullet connector, Boom. which we're going to plug in like so. So nice. if we did this right, and assuming <laughs> that there are no shorts, which there probably are, when I power this up, we will not get blue smoke. Instead, what we will get is a wonderful LED uh, ring lighting up with the seconds uh, currently being registered by our RTC. So let's okay. go ahead and three... 
Fingers crossed. Get that away. Uh, wait, I didn't power up. Okay, so we're going to go and hook this up now and see. There we go. So Ooh. what this is doing is the Arduino is providing the logic to our LED ring. Uh, and it's going to go to zero seconds in just... Oh, there we go. And remember, if you remember to our programming, every time it does that, it's adding another to the minute counter. Right. And then when the minute counter fills, it fills up the minute times 10 counter. Mm -hmm. When the minute times 10 counter fills up, it fills up the hour counter. Right. When the hour counter fills up, it fills up the hour times 10 counter. And when the hours times 10 counter fills up, back to zero. Right. So it's just, it's just a cycle. Now, just to prove that our buttons are working, uh, you, you'll remember that these two buttons right now in this mode... These buttons control brightness, so I can make it really bright or really dim. The next button over switches modes, so this is the time setting mode. This is uh -huh. the one that would allow me to set the time on the clock. This mode right here, this is the animation mode. And in That's the animation mode, this is the fun one, right. Yeah. Uh, the, the other buttons allow me to select which uh, animation pattern I want to use. Uh, that's cool. I like that. There we go. At some point, we got to incorporate like an alarm clock or something where it does the animation po uh, at like a certain time. Oh, I've already started working on version two of this What? Part. Yeah. Now, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and, and continue soldering this. We're going to do the same thing for the other side of the ring. We're going to incorporate all of the minutes and the seconds. We're going to get it hooked up to the other side here so that we'll have power coming from both sides of the clock. But before we do that, you know what I want to do, Brian? What's that? I want to take a look at a different type of tool that I think I want to use on the future project. Because PLA is nice. Yeah. But what if I could make this project out of aluminum? Well, let's find out. We, we can do that in a bit. But first, let's go ahead and take a minute for these messages. We'll be back with more know-how in just a second. Thank you guys for letting me interrupt. But a word, as they used to say, now a word from our sponsor, WordPress. And kind of, kind of I, feel, I feel special about more than a sponsor. WordPress, they're right here. They're in my heart. Because for years, I've been using WordPress. I started using a self-hosted WordPress site. I think 2005, 2006, loved it. That's where my blog was. I flirted. I Yes, I had an affair with another company. I flirted with them. But I'm back in the fold. And actually, it's better than ever because now I'm on WordPress.com. They do the hosting, so I don't have to pay those expensive hosting fees. They do the security patches, the updates. They offer the huge variety of plugins. It's it's easy. I You know, I thought, oh, I got to be a man. I got to host my own. No, 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 no. Save yourself trouble. Go to WordPress.com. It's better than just, you know, they do the hosting. They also, are, there's a huge community there, and you're part of that. You get, you can, on, on any WordPress post, you get a like button, which will automatically bring you to the front page. You get enough likes. It generates more traffic. I have half a million people now following my blog that just weren't following it before, thanks to WordPress.com. And man, the community there is great for support, advice, suggestions, and, of course, the great WordPress support engineers who will go the extra mile to help you make your website sing. Whether you're making a blog, uh, a website for your business, whether you've done it before or you, this is your first time, you're going to love WordPress.com. It couldn't be easier. In fact, when you first go to WordPress.com, press the Get Started button. They just give you a couple of templates. makes it very simple. You can import all your content. Every site supports the WordPress uh, format the API because it's kind of the, been the standard for decades for blogging, so it makes it easy to get your stuff into WordPress. And if you've never created a set a site before, very easy to start. And by the way, export from WordPress as well. It is the place to make your website. Beautiful designs, search engine optimization, built-in social sharing. By the way, very important. When you put a post up, and your your friends or your customers share it on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, or Google+, Plus, that really helps you. So those sharing buttons make a big deal. And, of course, support is there to help you with a WordPress plan, expert support. 28% of all websites run on WordPress. That should tell you something, including some of the biggest publications in the world, like Quartz.com. That's a WordPress site. WordPress. If they can do it, believe me, they can handle you. Go to WordPress.com slash know-how right now. You'll save 15% off any new plan purchase. That makes it a very good deal. WordPress.com slash know-how for 15% off your brand new website. Join me, won't you, at WordPress.com. WordPress.com slash know-how. Now back to the guys. And we are back. Okay, so I'm going to continue soldering this together. In the meantime, Brian, when we were at World Maker Fair, mm -hmm. one of the booths that we stopped by wasn't a 3D printer. It was a CNC machine. But a right. CNC machine that 
was actually within the price range of what you might consider for a maker shop. And, and my thing was, I could take most of the projects that I've done, everything from this to say the spinner mm -hmm. to even the, the goggles, and I could make it out of aluminum. I could make it out of steel. Right. steel. I could make it out of brass and just give it that little extra something, something. Because there is something about metal. Oh, absolutely. It just feels nice. Well, so as we were perusing the booths at Maker Faire, there's a lot of things that will catch your eye. But, of course, my eye was attracted to this because, one, there's a motorcycle in the yes. booth. And, two, it was a 3D printer that would do metal. Yeah. So without further ado, this is the ability. Over the years, we've seen some incredible 3D printers, some incredible CNC machines. But have you seen a device that can do it all? That's why I'm speaking with Jamie here, taking a look at the Ability 3D 888. Now, Jamie, what does 888 mean? Well, 888 stands for the bed, which is 8 by 8 by 8. Essentially and specifically, it's 200 cubic millimeters. Now, tell me a little bit about what this can do, because I understand that uh, you've got multiple capabilities that you've built into one box, including, and one that our audience is going to love, the ability to actually carve through metal. Yes. Well, not only does it do engraving, but we're literally 3D printing as well. Essentially, this is a modified MIG welder with a CNC milling component to it. So you can feed it, and it will extrude any type of welding wire, which is amazing. So that includes aluminum, stainless steel, steel, and other products as well. It even has the ability to 3D print plastic as long as you switch out the component. So it has multi-functions, which is really incredible. And as it is laying out and welding layer by layer, there's also a CNC milling function, which polishes it up. What I like about this is you've combined functions and features that we've seen in other products separately. We've got some very good 3D printers. We've got some very nice CNC machines. But your machine has the ability to carve away material it doesn't need and then add material on top of that. Tell me, what kind of trick of technology did you have to use to get that to work properly? Well, it is both additive and subtractive. And like I said, it's a combination of a modified MIG welder with the, the CNC component. So it's fantastic in that it builds upon itself. And yes, it does carve away unnecessary like excess. All right, now we got to ask this. Because there are products out there who, that can do something like this with multiple components added on top. But the, it always comes down to a question of strength. It does me no good if the components that I make can't actually be used in a real world application. What kind of strength can I build if I'm subtracting and adding onto a part? Well, we absolutely agree that strength testing is incredibly important. So in about a couple weeks, we're gonna be 3D printing this component of a Harley Davidson Speedster. We're gonna put it in the motorcycle and we're gonna rev it up, do some burnouts and test that strength. So if you follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, you're gonna be able to see that, those strength testing videos. And we're very excited to make that and introduce that to everybody. Okay, now I got to ask for the price, of course, because uh, this is normally the hang point. But then I also have to ask you where they can find you on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. So first of all, pricing and availability. Okay, so availability, we'll be launching our Kickstarter January 2017. And what's amazing and probably going to blow your mind is that the price point we're looking at is only $2,000 to $3,000. I just saw one of these last year, the big milling machine that was selling for 15000 So, yeah, this is a little bit better. Uh, now, if they wanted to find you and if they wanted to find out more about this, more about the project, more about what the Ability 3D can do, where should they go? <laughs> All right, so on Twitter, we're Twitter-Ability3D. Also, Facebook and Instagram is all Ability3D. Jamie, thank you very much for thank talking you. to yeah, us. Thank you for sharing the 88. And, uh, folks, 3D printing is so old. <laughs> now, I, I, what I ultimately what I want is I want a machine that will do both additive and subtractive printing. I want a one cabinet that can both lay down material and right. then take it away when when it's not necessary. And that's that's kind of my dream. I, I so would love to build the, that. The holy grail of a three D printer and a C CNC machine yep. together. Exactly, exactly. Now, Very complex, but it's cool. At the school, I do have a new gadget that I've been playing with because they got one for this. It's a, a real, actual laser cutter Ooh. that will cut up to eighth-inch steel. Nice. Is, so can we make some know-how signs and stuff? Yeah, but I mean, the problem with that is it's really, it's 2D. So Because, uh, yeah, you can't, like, add depth to it. It's basically just a flat template, yeah. which is still cool. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, can you imagine if you could, like, build up on top of that and then cut out? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's get cool. Let's hmm. get cool, Brian. I'm wondering. No, no, no. I'm, I'm 
Thinking far off into the future, though, if uh, you had some sort of 3D printing device that would do two materials and one that would dissolve in like a... Like yeah, they have those. They, okay. Actually, there, there are filaments that you can print with and then they'll dissolve. That I, I like the idea because then you could do support. some structures that All support the themselves until the material cools and then dissolve the other material away. Precisely. Yeah. And actually, there is an upgrade for my um, my Maker Select, actually made made by... Joseph Prusa. I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to buy oh, it. Yeah, yeah. But it's really designed for his printer. It, it will work on mine if I rejigger my controller. Uh -huh. That will allow me to use four different filaments. Oh. Okay. And so I mean so it's like three different colors plus the support material that dissolves away. Right. That will give me so much more flexibility with what I can print because right now yeah. I'm very limited by you know, make sure that you've got uh, the larger surface at the bottom and then you build to smaller surfaces. And yes. That's that's a pain. So if I can use a support material, I can make these incredibly intricate one-piece models. True 3D prints. Yes. Because yes. a lot of the time when we're doing these projects, like even with the spinner project, I had to rework my mind and imagine how the printer works building from the bottom up and that's why a lot of times you can't do cases that have overhangs and things you need to flip them over and rotate them in a certain angle so that you can then build it um but if you can kind of cut that process out that'd be really cool oh by the way bleak in the chat room is saying eight inch steel what no no not eight and eighth inch one eighth, eighth inch steel I, yeah a laser that could cut through eight inches of steel that i would <laughs> I think uh, the, the military think the would military be knocking on your door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, but they do have those lasers, but they're all chemical lasers, which are incredibly oh, yeah. toxic. Because essentially what you do is you use a chemical reaction to generate the energy you need uh -huh. to create an intense pulse of infrared uh, or near-infrared energy. And is there a lot of pressure behind that? There's not a lot of pressure, but the, the chemicals that you mix together, it is a witch's brew. It is horrible, horrible stuff. Yeah, I can uh, imagine. Yeah, it's it's not solid state. If it's cutting through something like steel. Yeah. 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 No, don't do that. Don't do that. All right, so when we come back, we're going to finish the assembly. We actually have to put this thing together. And uh, we want to show you a couple of the, the, the little issues that we had the first time I was assembling this. Remember, folks, this was an entirely original project, and the only reason why we did it was because we thought the know-how audience could improve upon it. We are giving you all the templates, all the files, all of the individual Tinkercad sheets that I created for this. So they're all going to be linked up so you can make your own. I want you to create your own base. I want you to make a better clock. I want you to add features. Like, for example, why not, since we're using a 5-volt system, why not add USB charge plugs? Why not Ooh. add uh, Bluetooth uh, connectivity? Why not add... Uh, uh, someone said they wanted to put a servo so that they could make the thing rock back and forth. <laughs> I like that idea. Do it. Yeah, Do it. Totally. I want to see it. We, this is what makes us excited. That's yeah. all part of the maker spirit and exactly. adding your own flavor to certain projects. And we'll get right back to it. We've got this. So this is what I assembled while, <laughs> while we were away. It's almost done. It's almost done. But before we go there, let's go ahead and take a moment for these messages. If I may interrupt for a little bit, uh, we'll get right back to know-how in a second. But first, I want to tell you about something that I know how to do. The Ring Video Doorbell. I put this on my doorbell. I'm no handyman. Believe me, that's why I don't host know-how anymore. I don't know how. But this it wasn't hard because, whoop, yeah, the kit comes with everything. So the drill bit, which I just dropped, it comes with everything you need. Yes, there's a drill bit somewhere on the floor now. Uh, there's also a screwdriver with a special proprietary bit that you use to lock your Ring Video doorbell on. You get the, the handle, you get the screws, everything you need, including a level to do a great installation. This is going to replace your wired doorbell. They also have a version. Actually, this will do wired or unwired. This is the original Ring, which has the big battery. It'll go all year. But the most important part of the Ring doorbell is the camera, the microphone, and the speaker. Because now, when you pair it with your Wi-Fi, you can see, hear, and talk to anybody at your door, whether they ring your doorbell or not. You'll get a little alert on your phone that says somebody's out front. You can talk to them and say, can I help you? And if it's a bad guy, they, they're not happy. They run away. Plus, you got a nice clear video of them, which is always handy. <laughs> Use it for IDing them. If you're not home, the Ring Video Doorbell is like being home. It lets you keep an eye on your house wherever you are. 
And now Ring has added some more products, some really great stuff, including the new floodlight cam. I love the floodlight cam. So we've you have it? Do you have that, Gary? So when you so when you um you know, you've seen these before. A lot of houses have these motion controlled floodlights, right? So if somebody walks by, it's a convenience for you. You walk down the side of your house, it lights up, you can see where you're going, and it helps deter bad guys. The light comes on. But bad guys, you know, they've seen these before. That doesn't stop them anymore. However, <laughs> now when they walk down the alley, the light comes on. If it's you, no big deal. You get the convenience. They go, oh, he's got one of those automatic lights. No big deal. But you're going to get a notification on your phone. There's somebody behind your house. Pull up the picture. See the video. You can talk to them. Believe me, that gets their attention. Yeah? What you doing back there? Hey, can I help you? Okay, first of all, it's such a clear sound. They don't know if you're really there or it's just a speaker. And then... If they don't respond, you press a button and a 110 decibel alarm goes off. Have you tried it? It's loud. It is <laughs> in that. But at that point, they're out of there. It really works. So if you are interested, I want you to go to ring.com slash know-how. If you don't have a Ring video doorbell yet, get one. It's just the best thing ever. They do. They have this neighborhood program where they'll, they'll put them in neighborhoods. You can actually read about it on the website. They put it in a Southern California neighborhood. They, Not all of them. One in ten houses got a ring video doorbell. Just one in ten. But it cut crime in that, that neighborhood more than half. I mean, that that is huge. That's with one in ten. Put one in your house, it'll cut crime 100%. You will know who's in your vicinity and you'll be able to control it and say something to them. Wall Street Journal's best of CES 2017, and now we got a great deal, up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit. But please go to this special address, ring.com slash know-how, because that way the guys will get a little, you know, they don't get any money. They'll get a little, a pat. I'll give them a gold star, a pat on the back. The Ring folks will say, oh, this know-how ad really worked. That's what we want. Go to ring.com slash know-how. Save yourself 150 bucks and help the guys. Ring.com slash know-how for a Ring of Security kit. We thank Ring so much for their support of the know-how show. And now back to knowing how. And we're back. Okay, so Brian, we've got... Uh this is mostly assembled. It doesn't look like it. It, it, totally, it totally is. So we've soldered it all together. Uh, if you if you go to the, the wide view. I've, I've already put the uh, LED ring into the frame just so that it will guide the wires. Uh, let's let's go ahead and drop the, the minutes and the hours in as well. Uh, one of the other things that you need to do when you, when, you, when you do this, before you actually drop in the modules, go ahead and hook it up to make sure you're going to hook them up the right way because you could actually put this in upside down. And okay. Then, then, yeah. Then they, it won't count right. It like count sideways. <laughs> that would, it's already a little difficult to count without doing that to yourself. Precisely. Just yeah. Just don't do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my uh, my wiring just before. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hook up my wiring it's, before I drop it and destroy everything. Still good. It's, it's still, still good. good. It's still okay, bros. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not using brosive. We're not using brosive. I thought brosive was okay. It was on the list of like approved words. <laughs> or no, the approved use of bro is brosidin, king, bro bro <laughs> <laughs> king of the brosives. <laughs> All right, so let's hook this up and see. Okay, so we've got our seconds are counting properly. Our minutes are in the right place. Nice. Okay, and uh, apparently this thing. Oh wow, it actually is on time. It's it's uh, eight o'clock, so wow. that's not lit up, and this is not lit up. That makes sense. Then. So what I need to do is I need to change the time so it does light up because we uh, right just for demonstration purposes. Uh, there we go. Minutes, Ooh. hours. Oh, it's okay. Beautiful. You'll you'll notice. Look at the hours. So my hours are actually counting upside down. Oh, you'll notice so that. Need, See, it's counting yep, from yep, the yep. top. So we got to uh, flip that. Panel yeah. So around. this is the wrong side. No worries. There we go. Actually, let's... Wait, no. It's this way. Oh. That's what we want. Okay, we wanted to count up. Ah. And minutes. Yep, minutes are set. And good. We want this to count up. So this is our orientation. This is this is how we want to install everything. And by the way, this is also a good system integration test because we want to make sure everything lights up once we've started putting it into the frame because it's very easy to short something out. Right. So be careful. Now, the nice thing about this is this is all friction held. So once you have it in position, you can just snap it in and everything should stay in place. Now, there's this center channel right here uh, which, that hides all of my wiring. That's where I'm going to sort of pull back the wire if I mm -hmm. don't want it to be in the columns. And once I'm done, I've got this. This snaps right over the top. 
and it's again, it's just a friction hold. Yeah. And ta-da. So now nice. it, it covers that all up. So how many times can you rotate it around before you should be fearful of twisting those? Uh wires? well, I've done it about forty times. Oh. There's okay. a lot of slack in here, but um, just don't 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 do that. test it. Yeah. That's that's just silly. <laughs> that's just silly. Okay. So uh what we've got on here is this is sort of the naked it's so version pretty. of the clock. If you go to the side view there, Burke. This is the, the naked version of the clock. We still need to add the diffuser. There we go. Uh, we still need to add the diffuser over the top. Right. And again, this just snaps right over. Uh, actually, Burke, if you drop the lights a little bit. There you go. So that's the reason why we want the diffuser is that's a little bit too direct. Uh, we don't want that. Yeah. We, wa we want it to be, ah, there we go. See? That works really well. Yeah. That's cool. And so you don't, you don't want to see so much the individual lights as the individual light blobs. Very nice. There we go. And that's, Bravo, Padre. That's our clock. Now, I've got the, the last pieces, the finishing pieces, so the, the caps that I, I would put on this. Yeah. But that's after I, I do this. So I, I'm, what I'm going to do is, you know, you have to put the uh, the wires into the column because you actually want to hide them. Right. Uh, and then the last piece down below is I've got, uh, where are those pieces? I've the got caps. two pieces that will cover up this channel because we also want to hide hide that wiring. And again, that's held on by friction. Uh -huh. I this This lid for the wiring compartment will actually stay on without any sort of fastener. But I've also included four three millimeter screw mounting holes. So if so you, you if you want something to hold it down, I would do that rather than gluing it down. And and that's pretty much it. This, nice. this is our LED clock, Brian. That is a cool project, Padre. It's a, it's a cool project just because it uses all the knowledge that we've been accumulating from know-how over the last couple of years. Yeah, I've kind of been building up to this. And yeah. I think, uh, one of my favorite parts about this project too is to kind of see where where the audience takes it. Where yeah, somebody might use the same components but design the clock in a different way so that because I kind of want to play around with how I display the time. Right. Um, but this is cool. I like it. Oh, we've got people in the chat room asking what that USB port is. Uh, actually, if uh, if you go to the side view, that no, the side view, the other side. There you go. That USB port is actually the access port for the Arduino. So if you want to reprogram this, that you don't sense. actually have to take it out of the case to be able to re reprogram it. Right. Yeah. Very and cool. actually, you know what? Uh, vamp a little bit, because what I'm going to do is I'm, I want to close this up. I actually yeah, want you're going to make it pretty? I'm going to make it pretty, Brian. Okay, okay. Um, well, let me ask you, what was the hardest part of printing this project? Was it the base? Because that took up like the whole bed, didn't it? Yeah, the, the problem is the base, not only was it a, 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 a complicated print, yeah. but it was a long print. It took so freaking long to do it. I mean, it was just one of these things where uh, I started the print, I woke up, and it was still printing. Right, because the printer is not smart enough to say do one pillar and then do the other pillar. Correct. It, it has to do each layer by So it's going to go from pillar to pillar to pillar rather than like taking a shortcut. And that's a lot of movement, that a lot of wasted movement, That is an awful honestly. lot of wasted movement. Um, so 3D printers still have a little ways to go to get like a smart 3D, 3D printer. But <clears throat> also, didn't you, you utilize the entire bed for the circle too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that was less so. I, I had a little bit of spare room. But the circle was not dictated by how big I wanted it to be. It was dictated by the size of the ring. Yeah. Because the ring is already a set size, and you have to be able to fill up that size. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Hold on. I'm Although, having trouble drawing this down. Get in there. You know what I need? I need what? a non-conductive poker. <laughs> this is a conductive poker, but I'll, I'll use it anyways. I, I, the the clothespin clothes might, might be too big, yeah. yeah. There we go. See, oh, yeah, this the works. Healthy hands. Yeah, oh, <laughs> the uh, the Birking hands. I'll Birking call them. hands. Uh, no, Burke. Thank you very much for your clothespin helping hands. And I, I mean that. I mean because for some reason ours keep disappearing. I, have I no don't idea know where, where they, they went. Would have gone. Uh, but they are obviously gone. I, I kept three pairs of helping hands here just because I don't ever want to bring home bring gear from home. It's, it's really strange. I'm gonna double check uh, my apartment when I get home, but I don't know where you I would, would have, have taken them home. I. There's no soldering projects I've done at home in recent memory, so I don't know why I would have. Well, unless, unless Brian, you just you collect them because they remind you of me. <laughs> because Padres, my knowledge helping you're the helping hands of knowledge. Brian's like, no, that that can't be it. That's no, not, that can't. That's, that's not at all. Definitely Sorry. not it. No, no. Uh, whatever you were thinking, just stop thinking that. Just stop. Just okay. stop. So this is more of what it's going to look like. Do you have your caps too? Or yeah, I got the caps here somewhere. Finish this off. Yeah, you know what? We've come this far, Brian. 
Yeah, we need closure on this project. This has been what a five. This was a five-week project. Yeah, and it was fun. I really enjoyed doing this. I mean, I I want to do more projects like this where it's it's not useful for anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something that we did. Yeah, but we learned a lot along the way. Well, I won't even say that. <laughs> because uh, I don't want to yeah, get sued for right. false advertising. I don't know if there's learning here. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, I mean, it's soldering. It's, it's a little bit of Arduino programming, and yeah. it's a little bit of imagination. But again, folks, the reason, the primary reason why we do projects like this is we want to see where you take it. So please, please make us happy by turning this into something magical, something mm -hmm. wonderful, something that you think represents who you are and what you want to create. And I probably should have looked in this because there's a right and a left cap. And I think I'm pretty Really? Wrong. Yeah. I did not because I, I was stupid and I was lazy and I didn't design them to be symmetrical. <laughs> that was me. That was entirely me. Yeah. Okay? I, I, okay. I have no one to blame for that but, but myself. I did That's that. Right. Brosif. Brosif. It's okay. You can just keep, keep trying caps and see what happens. Yeah. Well, what will happen is ultimately I'll break off Snap all the... Snap it off, yeah. yeah. I'll break off all the friction posts, but but you know what? It's worth it for our know-how audience. I want audience. you to finish it so then I can keep it at my desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Oh, how about... Eh? Hey, there, there you That's go. One. One okay, cap. so that means this must be the other side. These are the pillars of knowledge that you're capping over here. Uh, uh, Whoa. Uh, Whoa. There we go. Ooh, easy does it. Cool. There we go. And so now I can Looks plug this, this Mama Gemma in. Bam. Oh, now you'll never be late for time. work again. It's time, Burke. It's time. <laughs> we have harnessed the power of time. And actually, <laughs> let's let's go ahead and set the proper time. I think. Oh sure, yeah. Uh, there you go. What is it? A three-hour tour. Uh, so eight is that, and sixteen is. Uh, bring down the light so I can actually see what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see what you're doing? 16, so... Diva. Wait, and there is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Boom. There you go. That's Yay. our turn. Ta-da! Now, Brian, one, one last bit about this, and that is I've, I have started working on the next version of it, and... Um, it's clear. It looks like this. So it's oh. all with clear material. Nice. And it's with LEDs on both sides. Ooh, that so should be the, cool. It's the same basic project, but it just looks really cool. You should call it a LED clock project ice. Because that would make it You're cooler. not allowed to make a project. Project anymore. Ice. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we know that this the has been a clock. lot of material, and Brian is still making up names for our project. But we want to make it easy for you to find everything. So, again, if you want to do this project, all the links, all the templates, all the STL files, all the programming, all the parts mm -hmm. lists are going to be find out, found at our show notes. And, Brian, where did they find those? You can find those at twit.tv slash kh. And, yeah, you're definitely going to want to go there to uh, go through, thumb through the show notes. And also, since this was a five-part series episode, uh, download the show and subscribe because otherwise you're going to miss some and you're just not going to be able to build the project along with us. Yeah. I also don't forget that you can find us on the socials. Just go to Google Plus and look for Know How. Ask to join. Very short approval process to keep out the spam accounts. But once you're in, you can ask questions of the group. You can get ideas for projects or perhaps you want to post pictures and videos of your projects so that we can show them off on Know How. Brian and I are serious. There's nothing that makes us happier than watching you take one of our projects and turning it into something special. We've got people in the chat room saying, why not do this with one post? Or why not do it? Yes, do that. We want to see it. Please do it. And again, go to Google Plus and look for Know How. That's right. But if you want to see uh, when we're working up to these projects, kind of what we're doing behind the scenes and what might be coming um, in the future, we post a lot of stuff on something called Twitter. And you can follow me there at Twitter. Cranky underscore Hippo. And you're going to find me at Padre SJ. And you're going to find the third member of our group, uh, Berk, Berkey Birking, Berkey, Birkenstock. Who we couldn't have done this episode without. Yeah, at Twitter.com slash, is it, uh, what is it, Burke? It's uh, A-N-E-L-F. -A -A Three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, cool. Burke. Thanks, Burke. Until next time, I'm Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, go keep track of time.